And we're live. Good morning. All right. Good to see you. Good morning. Blessed Sunday. I got another message today. Thank God. We're going to be in the Soul Surrey Song and Hymns again. Um, we're going to be in, I think, uh, we're going to sing 145. It is well with my soul. Hymn number 145. It is well with my soul. I'm going to do two verses today. Um, so let's begin. Here we go. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, oh the bliss of this glorious thought my sin not in part but the whole is nailed to the cross and i bear it no more praise the lord praise the lord oh my soul it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Amen. Amen. I love that song. Should be uh, always well with our souls, no matter what's going on in our lives, to praise the Lord. Um, our opening reading today is in Psalms uh, chapter 106, Psalm 106, almost the uh, center um, chapter in the entire Bible. So if you open up your Bible right in the middle, you're almost hit Psalm 106. <clears throat> if you want to read along, I'll, I always read to the King James. The Bible says in Psalm 106, Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can show forth all his praise? Blessed are they that keep judgment, and he that doeth righteousness at all times. The word of the Lord. Amen. Only three uh, short verses. We're going to stop there. But these are three powerful verses at the opening of this psalm. We're not going to read the whole psalm. You can read it later um, yourself. But this psalm begins with a command in verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Why? Because his mercy endureth forever. We need to praise God giving us mercy. Okay? The command is to praise ye. Thank ye. Praise the Lord. Can I get an amen? Praise the Lord. Then it's followed by a question. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? You know, maybe this is not a question. Maybe it's a challenge phrased as a question. Can you utter the mighty acts of the Lord? I dare you to. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? I challenge anybody. Or maybe it's a rhetorical question. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Nobody. Because to even attempt 
to utter all the mighty acts of the Almighty God. It's impossible. There's too many can possibly do it. Not with our just uh, our flesh. And finally, in verse 3, we have a very powerful statement. The Bible says, Blessed are they that keep judgment, and he that doeth righteousness at all times. I hear people say, God bless you a lot of the times. You know, it's tradition um, to say, God bless you when somebody sneezes. God bless you, you know. I mean, it's nice. It's a nice gesture. I mean, who doesn't want to be blessed, right? I mean, I hear Catholic Catholic priests can bless you with holy water, so they call. But what does the Bible say? The Bible says, blessed are they that do with righteousness at all times. Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. Friends, today in this video, in this message, and I'm going to try to go as fast as possible for the sake of time, but I want to talk today about being a good sport. Being a good sport. We're going to talk about sportsmanship today. Some things in our life don't go the way that we want them to go. You know, some things go uh, a different way than, uh, than what we'd otherwise hoped for, what we planned for, what we prayed for even, what we prepared for, and, and even though we executed uh, our plan to the best of our ability, sometimes things just don't happen the, the way that we want them to. And sometimes that causes us to stop praising God, to stop giving thanks uh, when we don't get our way. Or uh, we forget that blessings come uh, to those who are righteous, righteous all the time. Like our opening reading says, we want our blessings all the time, right? We want our blessings now, we don't necessarily want to be righteous to receive our blessings, right? Um, so today's message is about sportsmanship and what does it mean to be a good sport um, when things don't go your way. Uh, I want you to open, if you have a King James Bible, to uh, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. That's going to be our opening message, or our opening verse, or excuse me. <laughs> the next verse we're going to go through anyway. But uh, we're going to look at an illustration here of what of being a good sport. And we're going to look at a couple of these. But, you know, I first I wanted to explain what does it mean to be a good sport? What is a good sport? What is sportsmanship? Maybe you maybe you've heard the phrase in the first uh, heard the phrase before being a good sport. And <clears throat> being a sport is when you're engaged with somebody in, in some kind of competition or uh, some kind of game. Maybe you're playing a game, it has rules. And so, what is being a good sport? A, a good sport is somebody who plays by the rules, who plays fair. They don't cheat. Um, they don't, uh, they don't uh, try to go outside of the rules, basically. And, and, it, and if they lose, being a good sport, you could either be a good sport if you win or lose. If you lose... You don't. Uh, you you always congratulate the person who won, who defeated you, right? Oh, you were you 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 defeated me, right? And when you win, you don't boast and rub it in your opponent's face. Um, the pe person who might have lost, because the whole point is to inspire other people to play better, not to shame people who don't play as good as you or who didn't win. So I wanted to look at this passage in 1 Corinthians. Let me get over there in my Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I believe that's where I told you to turn. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 is a passage where the Apostle Paul here, he's comparing the Christian life to a sport. Okay, He's comparing it specifically to running a race and our spiritual life, um, just like uh, the sport of track. Uh, or running, or running in a race, you know. Track is a sport where people compete to cross the fin. Who can cross the finish line first, right? Who's the fastest runner? Or who can uh, outlast and run longer than the other person or whatever, you know. Our spiritual life isn't about who can finish the race first, right? We're not competing who can finish the uh, race first. In fact, the Bible, Jesus actually said, uh, in Matthew chapter 20, verse 16, so the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. So Jesus said, hey, 
in the spiritual race, it's it's actually a little bit different. We're not racing to be first. We're not racing to see who could be first. Totally different concept than uh, uh, most sports that we think of. You see, the spiritual life is not about who can win. Um, it's about being righteous. Blessed are they who doeth righteousness at all times. Our opening verse in Psalms. Uh, the Christian life is about being righteous at all times. The sport of Christianity, if you uh, have you heard, it's not a spectator sport, right? And it involves the same characteristics as, as, as other sports, excuse me. But there are, just like there are rules that we have to follow. You know, God gives us commandments. God gives us uh, rules like love your enemies, don't steal, don't cheat, don't covet, your neighbor's possessions, things like this. And just like any other sport, when we follow those rules, we do good, we prosper. Uh, we're blessed, the Bible says. And if you don't follow those rules, if you if you cheat, if you sin, people will claim foul, penalty, you're not playing fair, you're not being a good sport. So let's look at this passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, starting in verse 24. Uh, where's my place? Here we go. The Bible says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run, that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, not as uncertainly so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. We're going to stop there. The Apostle Paul's basically saying there's a lot of things in our lives that we compete for, uh, for an earthly reward. Maybe it's money. Maybe it's fame. Maybe if it's, it's a trophy, recognition, whatever the case is. Eventually, that earthly reward is going to be worthless in the grand scheme of all eternity, right? At the moment, yeah, you have your reward, great. But as time passes, that reward will disappear, it'll fade away. But the spiritual life has rewards that last for all eternity. When you do according to God's will, He will bless you, He will reward you with rewards that last forever for all eternity. An incorruptible crown, it talks about. You know, and the Bible talks about crowns that we receive uh, rewards for living a good, righteous Christian life that we'll receive either now or in heaven later that will never fade. They'll never die. Um, for the example, and we're not going to get into this, but just an example is uh, if you were to die for your faith as, as a martyr or something, you'll receive a crown in heaven, right? And eventually we're going to lay our crowns at Jesus' feet. Um, but anyway... Paul's just saying, look, just like every other sport, the Christian life has rewards. You have crowns to earn. Now, none of us are, are, are trying to work and do good works to go to heaven, right? We're all saved by grace through faith, the Bible says, um, not of works, lest any man should boast. But there are rewards. See, God's going to pay us for all the good that we do. It's different, um, uh, you see. So many people... They they uh, they fall into this um, trap of living the Christian life for the wrong reasons, and and maybe they don't see the value in it. Like, what am I going to get out of this? That's because they're trying to get something um, right now. They're trying to get that corruptible crown, the thing that's not everlasting. They want instant gratification, right? Um, but the interesting thing about Christianity is that, first of all, it, it doesn't require any skills, right? You don't need a special skill or a special talent to, to live a righteous life, to, live, <laughs> to follow the Bible, right? To praise God, to say thanks to God, right? That doesn't take a special skill. Um, anybody can do it, no matter if you're a man, woman, child, old, young, uh, sick, healthy, anybody can do it. But what it does take is a desire, a specific desire, a faith-based desire, a zeal if you will, for God. I'm going to read from you. You don't have to turn there, but Romans chapter 10 says, Brethren, my heart 
desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. That's Romans chapter 10, verse 2. You can go read and get the context later, but the Christian life is not about having, is not only, excuse me, not only about having a desire, a zeal for God, what the Bible says is, but you also have to follow the rules. Well, how can you follow the rules and play the game fair if you don't know the rules, right? So the Apostle Paul is saying, look, in first, back to 1 Corinthians, that we need to live our lives with a zeal. We need to live as, uh, our lives just like any other sport. The spiritual life, you know, has losers and winners. And, you know, nobody wants to play with somebody who doesn't have a zeal to win, right? Like, I don't want to go play with a person who, who has no desire to win the game. They're not, their heart's not really in it. They're not trying very hard. Um, that's not somebody being a good sport, okay? Um, and likewise, you know, nobody, all, nobody wants to play with somebody who's not following the rules, who's cheating, who, who, has, who has a zeal to win, but not after righteousness, right? They're not following the rules. The Christian life, or excuse me, not according to knowledge, that's what the Bible says. They're not following the rules. You know, the Christian life, we need to have two things. We need to have a zeal to win, and we need to have knowledge on how to win fairly, how to play by the rules, how to be a good sport. Now, let's say you're playing you're playing the game, and, you know, you notice somebody, they're doing better than you. They're living a more holy life, a more righteous life. You know, what is a good sport, uh, somebody who's being a good sport supposed to do? Well... You, first of all, you don't you don't try to cheat to win, right? You don't want to you don't want to stop them from doing good. That's that's not your goal. Your goal is to just do better, not to cheat to win. And you don't try to change the rules to the game so that you can suddenly do better. No, you can't do that. And 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 you don't take away their credit for them that they're already doing good. You need to continue to um, say, hey, hey, good job. I see what you're doing over there. It's a good job. Good work. And the last thing is you don't want to blame God or, or say, God, you're being unfair to me, right? That would be being a bad sport, complaining, making excuses. A good sport is somebody who congratulates uh, people who are, doing, who are doing good, doing better than them even. Um, you see, you become a teammate. The Christian life is not about uh, me being better than you uh, because let's face it, you know, all of us, all of us, everybody, falls short of the glory of God, the Bible says. Every single day, even on my best day, I fall short of the glory of God. You know, every day we should all be getting down on our knees and we should be praising God. Not on our high horse. Don't get on your high horse and say, oh, look how righteous I am. Look, you know, No, the Christian life is not about showing off or boasting about how godly and holy you are as a Christian. I mean... The Bible says in Matthew chapter uh, 5, verse 16, Jesus said, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. See, the reason to let your light shine, the reason to do good works and to let everybody see your good works is not to boast that, hey, look how good I am. The, the reason is so that you can encourage other people to praise God, to glorify your God which is in heaven. That's the whole point of doing good works. You know, turn to James chapter 5 real quick. We're going to turn to James chapter 5 just real quick. And we're going to come back to 1 Corinthians. We haven't forgot about that. But you see, um, I want you to uh, see that the Christian life is about encouraging other people to do good works. To lift each other up, not to bring each other down. And look at, at the end of the chapter. We're going to read the last two verses. Bible says, brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from an error of his ways shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. See, part of our job, I'm going to go back to Corinthians now, part of our job as being a good Christian is when you're doing good, you help somebody else that's not doing so good, Right? That's part of being a good sport, good sportsmanship, being a good Christian sport. If you see your, your brother or your sister in Christ struggling, help them get back on the right track. 
help them get back on the right track. Don't, you don't beat them down further and say, hey, you're a loser. <laughs> you're not, like, that's not what we're called to do. We're called to help people, encourage people um, to be better. Um, I wanted to look at an example of this in the Bible. Uh, uh Let's actually get out of Corinthians. We're going to turn over to Acts chapter 8. Sorry. We're going to go to Acts chapter 8. Um, while you're turning there, I'm going to read from you Proverbs chapter 27, verses 5, which says, Open rebuke is better than secret love. Open rebuke is better than secret love. See, sometimes part of being a good sport is to admit that, hey, I lost. Fair and square. And it's better to rebuke somebody openly than to tell them in private, uh, oh, you, oh, you're doing great, right? So we need to admit when we're wrong. Did I tell you to turn to Acts chapter 8? Look down at verse 14. And we're going uh, to read this uh, example here. Bible says, Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, whom when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. We're going to pause there. The, the apostle, basically what's happening is the apostles are preaching to people. People are believing in Jesus. They're getting saved. Um, but the apostles have this extraordinary power um, that when they lay their hands on people, the Holy Ghost comes upon them, right? They receive the Holy Ghost. And 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 when, when Simon, uh, we're going to see him in uh, the next verse, Simon sees this, he gets jealous of them, right? He sees, he's, he's not being a good sport, basically. He, he's, he has a zeal, but he, he doesn't have it according to knowledge. Well, let's check this out in verse 18. The Bible says, When Simon saw that through laying on, or excuse me, that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. So he has a zeal. He wants to give people the Holy Ghost too, but not according to knowledge. He thought that he could receive this power by paying for it, by buying money. And, 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 and Peter rebukes him in the next passages. Um, but what I wanted to point out here is that he makes the mistake that... Uh, he thinks money is going to help him live the righteous life, right? See, no amount of money in our lives can help us uh, be a better Christian. That's not how this works. It don't care. It don't matter how rich you are, right? Like I said, anybody, no matter how rich or poor you are, could be a good Christian because it's not about who's got money. In fact, Jesus said in Mark chapter 10 that when you put all your focus on money, that could actually steer you away from serving God. Jesus said, in uh, Mark 10, 23, Jesus looked round about and saith to his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Money can a lot of the times be a, uh, um, something that holds you back from serving God. Not all the time, but it can be. It's very critical. Um, it's very hard um, to do the two. The uh, Bible says no man can serve two masters. Either you... Uh, Either you're going to believe God will bless you for how righteous you are, for living a righteous life at all times, or you believe that you can buy God off, you can pay off God. You know, Simon made this mistake that he thinks he could purchase righteousness with silver and gold. But let's see uh, how the Apostle Peter rebukes him openly in uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 20. It says, But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the, uh, 
if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven, for I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. He rebukes Simon pretty hard, man. Um, basically, he tells him, look, Simon, your heart's in the wrong place, man. You're doing things for the wrong reasons. You want to do the right thing, though. I see your zeal. I want you to keep that zeal. Just get it right, according to knowledge. You know, part of being a good sport is not trying to be rich, not trying to be famous, not trying to be the big hot shot. Okay? Part of being a good sport, a good Christian sport, is being a team player. And I want you to check out the, what, what happens in this next passage. How does Simon respond? Is he a good sport or is he a bad sport? Because the, the, because the apostle Peter, his elder, rebuked him openly. Acts chapter tw uh, 20, verse 24, or 20, chapter, Acts chapter 8, verse 24, sorry. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. Simon answered and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me. Simon was a good sport, we see. He didn't get mad at Peter for correcting him. He said, You're right. Pray for me, please. I want to get it right. I want that reward that you're talking about. That's the right attitude we need to have, you know. And I also wanted to mention here that, you know, Peter was also a good sport. He didn't humiliate Simon, okay. He didn't call him names and said, Simon, you loser, get out of here, you know. No, he didn't destroy his honor or his reputation, and that's, the, that's what we need to understand about being a good sport. When you have it right and somebody else has it wrong, um, you never want to uh, 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 humiliate that person. You always want to give them the opportunity to correct themselves. Okay, You always want to, if, if you're disciplined or rebuking somebody, you need to uh, leave, leave the door open just enough. Create a pathway for them to get it right. Invite them in. Say, hey, look, you're going the wrong way. Come this way. Come this way. Okay, there's no shame. There would be no shame. Just turn in directions, repent, come this way. Um, and, you know, Peter told him, look, you just, you need to pray, right? Repent. And that's exactly what he did. That's exactly what he did. And, and, and look what happened. Look what happened when, when both people were being good sports. Check this out. Verse 25. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord return to Jerusalem and preach the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. And they go on to uh, uh, do wonderful works for God. You see, being a good sport, when, when two people are being a good sport, it unifies people together. It brings them closer as a team. And, you know, today I look at all the pro athletes and, and, and they, they get to the top. You know, they become the best of the best. And, and, you know, and, and they start thinking that they can taunt other players and say, oh, well, I'm better than you. I'm the best, you know, and, and, and you suck and things like this. And that's not being a good sport. You know, if you're the best at the Christian life, don't broadcast it. Don't boast about it. You don't have to. Instead, uh, lift other people up, you know. Don't put other people down. Okay, that's not what uh, being a good sport is all about. Because if you're good at what you do, your job now is to make other people as good as you, if not better than you, okay? Um, and, and just because somebody's younger than you, or, or maybe you're a man, they're a woman, or vice versa, whatever the case is, maybe you're rich, they're poor, you can always learn from somebody, okay? If, if they're saved, the Bible says uh, that our bodies are a temple of the Holy Ghost, right? The, temp, uh, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. If you're saved, you're a believer, well, it doesn't matter who the other person is. If they have the Holy Spirit in them, you can learn from that person. I don't care who they are. Do not be a respecter of persons. Um, meaning, being a respecter of persons is, it doesn't matter what title they have, how rich they are, what they look like on the outside. It doesn't matter who the person is, right? Because uh, what matters is, does what they're saying line up with the Bible? Is it true or is it not true? Is that the Holy Spirit talking through them or is that uh, uh, the devil they're uh, talking through them? Because if it's true, be a good sport. Say amen. You're right. What you said is true. 
It's literally what the word amen means. True. Uh, can I get an amen? <laughs> Sometimes uh, um, there's going to be people who aren't going to be a good sport, even though you are. Okay. Um, this is my last segment that I'm going to go through. I don't want this to go too long. Uh, but uh, basically, you're going to be a good sport. Somebody else is not. They're going to be unfair to you. Uh, they're going to cheat. They're going to lie. They're going to steal. They're going to do whatever. They're going to be a bad sport. Um, but I, what I want to say here is don't let that stop you from being honest. Continue to be a good sport. If somebody else wants to cheat to win, hey, just take just take the loss, okay? Don't stoop down to their level and, and start cheating just so that you can beat them. That's not going to work. I mean, <laughs> what I mean is that's not the right way to do it. That's not what the Bible teaches. That's how the devil operates, you see? The devil wants to make it look like he wins by cheating, right? And he does a good job at it too, make it, making it appear like he's winning. Like right now, it sure looks like the devil's winning. If you look around in the world, it looks like, hey, the devil's winning. But let me tell you something. Jesus Christ is coming back. He's the king on the throne. He won. He won. The Bible says that we've already won. We're already conquerors through Christ. The devil tried to kill him. He couldn't do that, could he? He came back. Jesus is victor victorious. Um, and so if you feel like you're a loser, you feel like you're, 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 uh, losing, um, the battle, uh, the devil will do that. Just understand that that's, that's what he does best to make us feel a certain way, to make us feel like he's the champion. Okay. But just let me, let me tell you this. Feelings are just feelings. Okay. Just because you have a feeling about something doesn't mean that it's true. Sometimes we do bad things that make us feel good, right? And sometimes we do good things that make us feel bad. <laughs> you say, I don't understand you, Sean. I don't believe you. Well, look, ask any any woman who's ever given birth to a baby. Ask her, did that feel bad? Yeah, yeah, it felt bad. It was painful, Sean. It was painful. But was it good? Oh, yeah. Best, best, best ever. Love my baby. Most precious gift God has ever given me. Anyways, uh, that, that, I don't want to go too long. That's my message for the day, guys. Let's be a good Christian sport, okay? Let's not be a bad sport. Let's be a good sport. If you're losing, don't get mad, okay? Don't stoop to cheating. Just say a prayer. Give thanks to God for his mercy endureth forever. And just say a prayer. Get back on track. And if you're winning, if you're on the winning side, you're doing good, uh, your race isn't finished yet. Your job is now to help other people uh, be as good as you, okay? Help others along along the way. Don't rub it in their face that uh, they're not doing as good as you. Um, and, and, and if you have to rebuke them, leave them a way out. Your, your job is to encourage them, to unite the team, unite the brethren. And if all else fails, you're being a good sport, uh, and, and, and they're still cheating. They still want to be a bad sport. They still want to play unfair. Um, just keep being a good sport anyways. Keep doing the right thing. Keep, keep living righteousness at all times. So uh, just like the opening psalm we said, because sooner or later, they're going to get exposed. The devil's going to get exposed. God's going to bring justice. And you're going to cross the finish line. And you know what Jesus is going to say to you? He's going to say, well done, thy good and thy faithful servant. And that's what we want to hear. We want to be good sports. That's my message for the day, guys. God bless you. In Jesus' name, have a wonderful day. And thank you for listening. As always, um, I'm going to be giving God the last word. Um, we're going to be in 1 Peter chapter number 1, if you want to read along. God bless you guys. Have a great day. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this message today. Thank you for giving us another beautiful day on your uh, wonderful creation called Earth. Lord, we thank you for this message. A lot of the times in our lives, Lord, we we play sports or we do things in our life for the wrong reasons, Lord. And I ask that you help us do things for the right reasons to receive that that incorruptible crown, that that heavenly reward that crown in heaven that we just want to praise you and one day lay at your your son Jesus' feet, Lord. I pray that uh, 
You help us do good works for the right reasons. And I pray, Lord, that you remind us today that as long as we seek ye first the kingdom, your kingdom, and your righteousness, that all these things that we hope for and we pray for will be added unto us. And remind us that we need to seek you first, Lord. Father, I pray that you forgive us when we don't and when we mess up and we're a bad sport, that you have mercy on us. I pray that you bless those and acknowledge those who are living righteously, Lord, and protect them from anybody who's fighting unfairly against them. Lord, I know that you're the righteous judge. You always judge fairly and righteously. Lord, I ask that uh, you uh, you keep us in mind and keep us protected today as we go about our business. Lord, I love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. As always, God's getting the last word. Uh, we're going to be in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 25. God bless. Have a good day. First Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 25. The Bible says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober in hope, to the end of the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear, forasmuch as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb, without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last times for you, whom by him do believe in God that uh, that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing ye have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart, fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For as flesh is grass, and all the glory of man is as the flower of grass, the grass, the grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Amen.